All right, now I'm going to conclude uh, the presidency of uh, Lazaro Cardenas. Under Cardenas, the labor movement was revitalized. Aware of the sympathetic uh, attitude of the new regime, workers struck in unprecedented numbers for higher wages and better working conditions. In 1935, there were 642 strikes, more than twice the number in the preceding six years. Uh, by the way, something similar was going on in the United States. We'll talk about that next. In 1936, the young radical intellectual Vicente Lombardo Toledano uh, organized um, uh, a new labor federation, the Confedera Confederacion de Trabajadores Mexicanos, CTM, to replace the dying and discredited CROM. Uh, labor supported and in turn was supported by Cardenas. Labor, the peasantry, and the army were the, became the three main pillars of the official party, which was reorganized in 1938 by Cardenas and renamed the Party of the Mexican Revolution, the PRM. Uh, it would become the PRI later. The power of the generals uh, was weakened uh, by... Um, uh, raising weight, policy of raising wages and improving the morale of the rank and file, that was one thing, and by the distribution of weapons to the peasantry formed into a militia. So we sort of diffused military power uh, away from just the generals. Um, the last important regional Codillo, uh, General Saturnino Cedillo of San Luis Potosi, uh, was a foe of Cardenas's agrarian policy and was linked to the fascist gold shirts, and he launched a uh, revolt in 1938. It was promptly smashed, and Cedillo was killed in a, a gunfight with federal troops. Like land reform, uh, the labor reform had structural flaws that created serious problems for the, for the future. In return for concessions from a very paternalistic government, labor, like the peasantry, was invited to incorporate itself into the official apparatus and to give automatic and obligatory support to a government that in the last analysis really represented the interest of the national bourgeoisie more than the proletariat. In the domestic and international situation of the 1930s, uh, which was dominated by a struggle between pro-fascist and anti-fascist forces, the interest... Um, uh, of, of that bourgeoisie and Mexican labor largely coincided, but in the change conditions after 1940, labor's loss of independence and the meshing of its organizations with the official apparatus led to a revival of corruption and reactionary control of the trade unions. Corruption uh, and reactionaries in labor, uh, corruption and reactionaries in the structures that helped in aided campesinos. Although Cardenas uh, was sympathetic to labor's demands for better conditions, he was no foe of private enterprise, uh, despite efforts by his foes to link him or paint him as socialist or communist. Um, and in fact, he was like FDR in this regard. They tried the same thing with him, but in, at his core, he was a capitalist. Um, in fact, uh, industrial capitalism made significant strides under Cardenas. If Cardenas supported labor's efforts to raise wages where the financial condition of an enterprise warranted it, he also favored Mexican industry with government loans and protective tariffs that ensured the creation of a captive market for high-priced consumer goods. In 1934, his government established the Nacional Financiera, a government bank investment corporation that used funds supplied by the federal government and domestic investors to make industrial loans, finance public welfare projects, and issue its own securities, um, sort of a national investment bank uh, that would... Um, you know, do things like build airports and so forth. Um, and um, in the, the coming of World War II, which sharply reduced uh, the availability of imports, greatly stimulated the movement toward industrialization and import substitution. Like the U.S. economy, the Mexi Mexican economy uh, thrived during World War II. Now, Mexico's struggle for economic sovereignty, uh, a key point of the revolution, reached a, a high point under Cardenas. In 1937, a dispute between North American and British oil companies and the unions erupted into a strike, followed by legal battles between the contending parties. When the oil companies refused to accept a much scaled-down arbitration tribunal wage finding in favor of the workers, um, Cardenas intervened. Basically, they said, uh, the, the arbitration said, yeah, you got you got to pay them this much more. Um, 
and the companies refused, even though that was Mexican law. And so on March 18th, 1938, a date celebrated by Mexicans as marking their declaration of economic independence, the president announced in a radio speech that the properties of the oil companies had been expropriated in the public interest. With support from virtually all strata of the population, uh, Cardenas was able to ride out the storm caused by the economic sanctions against Mexico on the part of the U.S., England, and the oil companies. Um, the oil nationalization was a major victory for Mexican nationalism. It provided cheap, plentiful fuel for Mexican industry, and the needs of the industrialized oil industries further stimulated uh, industrialization. That said, um, the oil nationalization did not set a precedent. Some 90 percent of Mexico's mining industry, for example, remained in foreign hands. But Pemex, the now nationalized one giant oil company in, in Mexico, is by far uh, the biggest part of the, uh, the industrial sector. The uh, Cardenas government gave firm support to governments resisting the advance of, of fascism. Um, Mexico and the Soviet Union were the only countries to give significant amounts of aid to the Republicans during the Spanish Civil War of 1936 to 1939. This was a war between um, somewhat left-wing, but mostly just pro-democracy, uh, loyalist and uh, fascist uh, rebels. Um, and and that, that loyalist government received help only from the USSR and Mexico. It's a strange combination, and you'll learn uh, later why the U.S. did not help. Um, and so after the fascist victory uh, in, in Spain, Mexico opened its doors to loyalist refugees, including many talented Spanish professionals who made a significant contribution to Mexican culture and economic life. Um, Mexico steadfastly refused to recognize the legality of the Franco regime. The Franco regime lasted until his death in the 1970s. Education, especially the rural school system, made considerable progress under Cardenas, but in the last years of his presidency, in apparent deference to clerical and conservative opposition, he soft-pedaled the so-called socialist character of Mexican education. He was of Tarascan Indian origin himself, and uh, he displayed much concern for Indian welfare. He created a, a department, uh, uh, de Departamento de Asuntos Indigenas, or something like that, to serve and protect Indian interest and encourage the study of Indian culture, past and present, by founding the Instituto Nacional de Antropología de México, uh, Anthropological um, uh, Institute of Mexico. Now, right-wing opposition to Cardenas' progressive policies grew in the closing years of his presidency. Uh, of course, fascism was, was powerful, at reaching its peak at that time, actually. And reactionary groups encouraged and uh, financed by German agents and the Spanish fascist Falange uh, attacked the regime for its supposed communist tendencies. Uh, in apparent response to conservative pressure, Cardenas slowed down the pace of land distribution during the last years of his presidency and displayed a conciliatory attitude toward the entrepreneurial class, assuring its members that he regarded them as part of the vital forces of the country and that they need not fear the safety of their investments. It was not his choice to become more moderate in this way, but he kind of had to to balance some, some uh, trends and forces in the country. On the eve of the presidential election of 1940, right-wingers organized a campaign in favor of General Juan uh, Andrew Almazan, uh, very handsome guy here, on the right, uh, because he was a person of the political right. He was a vet veteran revolutionary, now wealthy industrialist of Monterey, uh, the left wing of the PRM advanced the candidacy of General Francisco Mujica. Uh, you may recall that name. He was the author of some of the most advanced provisions of the Constitution of 1917 and a close friend of Cardenas and his mentor. Um, and no man was better qualified to carry out the promises of the second six-year plan, which proposed to continue the rapid pace of agrarian reform, provide the ejidos with cheap credit, irrigation, and roads, and intensify <clears throat> intensify collectivization of ejidos to make them more um, economically viable. But the official party was an amalgam of social forces, uh, including increasingly conservative and influential industrialists. And evidently fearing the, the nomination of the radical Mujica would be a signal for a rightist revolt, Cardenas gave him no support, uh, and Mujica soon withdrew. Uh, 
and supported by the powerful CTM, uh, that was the new crom I just described a little few minutes ago, the party gave its uh, nomination to General Manuel Avila Camacho, who was loyal to Cardenas. He was sort of a compromised, middle-of-the-road candidate. Devout Catholic and a man of generally conservative views, uh, Avila Camacho was elected with almost 99% of the vote. The defeated Almazan fled to Texas, uh, proclaiming fraud. For a time, it seemed the revolt would break out, but Almazan soon returned to Mexico in private life. Meanwhile, uh, Avila Camacho was making statements designed to reassure foreign domestic capital. He disassociated himself from the radical leadership of the unions, expressed a flexible attitude toward the question of whether the ejido or small private property was best form of agrarian organization, and assured the Catholics that he was a devout believer. In December of 1940, Avila Camacho assumed the presidency without any serious disturbances, uh, peaceful transfer of power. But uh, the Cardenas era was the high watermark of the struggle to achieve the social goals of the revolution. Under his successors, there began an erosion of the social conquest of the Cardenas years and a drift uh, to the right. <laughs> 